everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I put together this moth slash skull sort of creation for Halloween. I chose this awesome cecropia moth but you could use any butterfly or moth as inspiration or just make something up. I'm using some pencil to map out the designs on the wings before I start filling in with acrylic paint. If you're not too confident with painting, you can always go for a much simpler butterfly design to try and make sure it's nice and striking, uh, but you're not too caught up in making sure that all the lines and patterns are perfect. I decided that I wanted to add in some fluffy antenna as well. I'm using blue cardboard just because it's what I had lying around, but I've painted it in the darker grey that I'm using in the middle of the moth wings to match. Once I've cut out the shape I want, I'm going to cut a ton of little notches in the side to give it that fluffy, feathery look that a lot of the moth antenna have. Though I will decide later on to paint these ones cream, but we'll get back to that. Okay, here's how the finished wings are looking. So the top and bottom half are now glued together. At the back here, I've got some clear fishing line tied in a loop and glued on as well. And I've got some blue cardboard there just to reinforce it as well. That clear string is going to wrap around the back of my head so I can tug it to flap the wings. To get these attached, I've just folded a tiny little lip right at the end of this one where it's going to attach to my skin. And I'm going to apply some spirit gum right along this edge here and along the line I want on my face. Remember to give it a minute or two for the spirit gum to get tacky before you try and attach it. Alright, little test run here and these are sitting pretty well so it's time to get stuck into the makeup. I'm using a grease paint in a cream colour as my base as it's probably the lightest colour on the wings themselves. If you've got a different design for a butterfly or moth wings, I would suggest using one of the lighter colours as the base for your skull as well. Just make sure you try and replicate a lot of the same colours and patterns as on your wings when you're doing the rest of your makeup. If you're using grease paint for this base colour, do not forget to cover absolutely everything in a setting powder. Doesn't matter if you make too much of a mess everywhere else as long as your face is looking good here. The next step for me is doing the eyes. So I'm going to be using a uh, soft black eyeliner pencil on my waterline and along the top of my lash line. Next I'm going to come in with a black eyeshadow and just a short little brush to pack on that colour, especially just around my eyelids and right underneath my eyebrows to sort of strengthen that brow bone kind of contour. I'm coming in now with a brown eyeshadow with a slightly larger fluffy brush around the outside of the socket to basically blend that out into that socket shape without having any of those hard lines. Just to touch things up a bit, I'm going to come back in with the black around my eyelids, underneath my eyebrows, and then down either side of my nose, just to really emphasize that frown. I'm going to use this same brownie burgundy color with a much bigger contour brush, and I'm going to blend in that color all along my hairline, and then blend it down onto my forehead here, just to create a bit of a gradient. Let's use this same color underneath my jawline to really sharpen up that face, and we're going to use it as contour as well underneath the cheekbones. You can go for a more circular shape uh, where that contour ends on either side of my lips uh, just to create that sort of sallow look to your face. Of course, if you've chosen different colors for the moth or butterfly wings you've made, you just want to make sure that the color you're using for the contouring is going to be a darker color than what you're using for the base. If you're not quite sure, you can always go for grays or browns as a relatively neutral option. Now, I really want my wings to sort of blend into the rest of my skin, so I'm going to use a deep orange eyeshadow here to blend from the wings and then sort of join that up with the eye sockets and then coming down just on the side of each of my cheeks here. I'm using again a relatively soft fluffy brush so I can create some nice gradients on those edges. For the skull nose, I'm using that same dark eyeshadow, but I'm using a very, very tiny brush so I can draw on those details quite well. I'm making sure it's darkest right at the center near my nostrils and just underneath my nose. So to add detail to the makeup, I want to bring some of the patterns from the wings onto the face. For this part, I'm using a white watercolor paint and just very slowly uh, wiggling my brush as I paint the line to create that uneven um, pattern and then bring that down onto my cheeks and down below either side of my mouth. That's looking pretty good now, so once that dries, I'm going to go back over it with the ready orange stripe as well. Before I get carried away doing any more detail on the face, let's do the teeth. So I've got a white watercolor paint for this one, and I'm going to be starting from the inner part of my mouth and working towards the outer corners just to make sure the teeth are all even. So I'm going to be doing very simple strokes in that sort of triangle shape, starting from my mouth and sweeping upwards for the up teeth, 
downwards for the down teeth, just so that the thinnest part is right at the bottom, away from the mouth. And then we're going to ruin all our hard work because I decided that the uh, area in my mouth was just too light. So I'm going back in with an orange to create some shading and then I'm going to redraw on those teeth um, and then just using a very very thin brush to uh, work a little bit of that orange eyeshadow in between each tooth to create a bit of shadow as well. It's time for the moth antenna and as you can tell I decided to change this color to a cream to match the cream of the skull base that I've got. So I've just gone back over it with the grease paint so I don't have to wait for any paints to dry and then I'm going to be using a brown eyeshadow right in the middle just to create a bit of shading as well. For this part I'm just using some spirit gum on my forehead and on the back of the antenna themselves to glue them down and then just applying a little tiny bit of powder around the base of them to make sure that they're blended into the face as well as possible. All right, let's get back to painting in some detail. So I'm gonna add in a little bit more of the white line on the top of this existing orange line. And you know what? I wanted to use the orange line to create some detail on the top of my forehead as well um, and coming onto the antenna. More line work underneath the existing lines here. And I decided I wanted to break up the cream color on the rest of the face. So I'm using that uh, deeper orange eyeshadow as I used before to create a bit more contour on the sides of my nose and underneath my eyes here. I'm just blending that out again with that fluffy brush. This is gonna create a lovely base because I wanna add in some freckles that sort of reflect that dusty white uh, speckly pattern on the wings. For the freckles, I'm using the same watercolor white paint that I was using before, but I'm using the back of my brush here to create a really, really thin point where I just dab it on gradually. I can use a skewer or a toothpick to create some even smaller ones if I needed to. And just because I can't stop fiddling, I'm going to use my blending brush uh, to blend that orange down between the antenna a little bit. I'm also going to go back over the watercolor line uh, on the antenna to extend that orange area. And more detail again, let's add some of that orange line work around my eye sockets. And then I'm gonna add in some extra freckles because why not? And in case you're not already sick of hearing it, even more line work. Though later on, I will change my mind about the ones on my chin. So I wanted to come onto my neck for this one, but if you don't wanna do something quite like this, you can always just bring the contouring further down onto your neck. For me, I wanted to draw on some extra wings. So I'm mapping these out very roughly in a brown pencil. I'm going to use the same cream base uh, that I used for my face uh, to map out the wings and towards the top of my neck I'm going to be just filling this in with a bit more of that contour. I'm going to be using a smaller brush as well for that uh, brown contour to create a bit more shadow in between each of the wings as well. I'm going to use a liquid black eyeliner around these ones just to create some outline. Then I'm going to come in with a black eyeshadow again and create some uh, shading underneath each of these wings as well. This should hopefully make it sort of pop a little bit off my chest. I'm going to switch to one of my bigger contour brushes to blend that eyeshadow out and just make it nice and smooth. Now to pattern these wings, I'm not going to try and replicate the exact wings on my face because they took ages. But I am just going to create a lot of very similar patterns here. So I'm going to come in with a black eyeshadow and create some squiggly lines. I'm going to go back over that towards the top with an orange eyeshadow as well. Let's create some harder lines and shapes as well using my trusty white watercolor paint. And of course some more details using this lovely deep orange watercolor. I'm using my black liquid eyeliner to go back over a lot of these wings to create some outlines. And then I'm going to be adding in some of those same freckles which will sort of tie it into the existing wings on the face and the rest of the face as well. For some last minute touch ups I went to add in some more line work, changed my mind about that added in a little tiny bit more of that orange contour around my chin and a couple of extra freckles. After darkening the eyeshadow again within my eye sockets, I was pretty certain this was done, but there was something that just felt like it was missing. So in the end, I decided to add in some black contact lenses just to make things look extra spooky. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this. Um, if you have feedback on how I can improve or suggestions on what you'd like to see next, please let me know in the comments below. I also want to take a second to thank my Patreon supporters. Without them, I literally could not do what I do. So thank you guys so much. 
If you want to join them, I will put a link in the description below. Uh, there's lots of different goodies that you get at different tiers as well. I especially want to say a shout out to my ultimate supporters on the top tier. That's Artemis, Dakota, Jess, Matt, Tamara, Tim, and Yuri. You guys are absolutely amazing. If you guys have a second, please like, share, subscribe, all those YouTubey things, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!